In this video, I'm gonna show you how to avoid this happening to your motorcycle tank's paint job, a mistake that I've made and I've learnt the hard way. And I'm also going to be fitting a non-standard tank to Crystal's bike, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that the proper way. So unfortunately, through the process of learning something new, we make mistakes. And I made a terrible mistake when I painted this tank. I'll never make this mistake again, and I'm gonna show you exactly what that is shortly. But before we get into that, the first thing I wanna mention is making sure that you isolate the tank from the frame, and that means using the vibration mounts. You can either use the OEM ones, or you can make and retrofit some of your own, which is what I'm gonna do in this video. So this part of the video mainly applies to anyone who's fitting a non-standard tank to a motorcycle. If you already have the original tank, it's going to have the original mounts and that's fine. But stay tuned because shortly I'm going to show you exactly what happened to my CX500 tank and why you should do this step that I didn't do. Unfortunately, I have seen people screw the tank directly to the frame and this might not seem a big deal, but over time it will destroy the tank and probably cause leaks. I have to order the proper rubber mounts for this from CMSNL, but until then, I'm gonna temporarily use some that I bought from the hardware store, just not gonna be as good as the OEM ones. Even though when I do get the OEM ones, I will have to trim them down ever so slightly, but this will do the job until I get the proper ones. The main difference is probably going to be the rubber quality. I know that the rubber in the OEM stuff is always going to be top notch, and it's probably gonna last another 40 years, whereas the stuff from the hardware store, it's always hit and miss. So once you've cut the old mounts off, it's a matter of putting the tank exactly where you want it, get that line perfect, and then make a small little mark on the inside where the rubbers are gonna be. So now that I have the front tank mounts finished and I've got that perfect line through the tank into the subframe, it's time to move on to the rear mount. You could potentially use the original rubber mounting cushion for this and that would work, but I've modified the entire subframe, so I'm gonna come up with my own way of mounting this tank. And I think that's the delivery of my new fuel tank. So I've actually replaced the tank with a new old stock tank from CMSNL. This tank is over 40 years old, it's never been used and it's still in the original box which I'm stoked about. And thanks to CMS we're still able to get parts like this today and I also grabbed myself a set of OEM handlebar controls. It's hard for me to say this, but I feel like I almost like the look of this tank on the bike than my custom painted green one that I had. And if you want to securely mount your mobile phone to your handlebars, go and check out what Quadlock have to offer. Getting back to my green Honda CX500 tank, I threw this on Crystal's bike just to see what it would look like. I sent a photo of this to Crystal and she actually said she really likes the color of the tank, so we may end up doing a military green, but I'm not entirely sure just yet. When I painted this tank from scratch, the one thing that I didn't do was actually line the inside of the tank. There were some veins of rust and I kind of just cleaned them up as best I could. And even though the tank was completely spotless and free of all rust, there must have still been some rust somewhere in the seam and it's made its way back through again and then leaked out into the paint job and separated the paint from the actual steel. And from there on, it just progressively got worse. It started as a small bubble and it just got bigger and bigger and then eventually the paint was completely destroyed anyway, so I needed to repaint it. But before I repaint it, I really wanna seal it and make sure this never ever happens again. So if you are gonna paint a tank and it's maybe an older tank or a bit questionable with some rust, I would highly recommend sealing the inside of the tank before you start painting. The sealer that I'll be using is a liquid that you pour into the tank by a company called KBS, and KBS products are well known for being super good quality and really long lasting. 
but just like anything that you do, you must prepare the area to be coated. And that's why you have to follow the instructions to the T when it comes to doing something like this. I've heard some horror stories about people using tank sealers and they peel off. And a lot of that is to do with the preparation, but it's also the product. Just make sure you do start with a good quality product. And that's why myself and many other bike builders use KBS. Tank mounting is sitting on a vibration mount and it's all tack welded together and later on I'll fully weld that out. This is just a little bit of bonus footage of me doing some metal shaping of some aluminium to fit perfectly around the back of the tank so that when I do the upholstery you'll have a nice crisp line with no big gaps. This is something that I do pride myself on with all of my bike builds. I'm using a combination of the nylon mallets with a sandbag and also the power hammer to manipulate the shape perfectly around this tank. And I'm actually quite stoked with how it turned out. But once we get to the upholstery, it'll all come together perfectly. If you want to check out some tank painting videos, I'll leave a playlist right here. And also don't forget to check out this one.